Yeah. So uh, in today's session, we'll be discussing with the next important clustering concept called as K Midoids clustering method. And it's also called as partitioning around Midoids. So uh, with respect to our syllabus, it is mentioned as PAM algorithm that is partitioning around Midoids. But mostly uh, we call it as K Midoids algorithm. So uh, as you can see, uh, this algorithm was proposed in the year 1987 by the two important uh, people like Kaufman and Rousseau. So these people have disco discovered this algorithm called as K-Midoids algorithm. So uh, if you are understanding the K-means algorithm where we are calculating the centroid based uh, calculations. So uh, K-means algorithm works based on the randomly selected centroid values. But with respect to that, k-means algorithm has some drawback that uh, because you're selecting some values randomly, it may, it may not give some fruitful results, right? So that's the reason we are now moving ahead with the next important algorithm called as k-medoids clustering method. So what actually is the meaning of a medoid? What is, uh, what is the meaning of a medoid? Okay, so uh, a medoid can be defined as the point in the cluster whose dissimilarities with all the other points in the cluster is minimum. So uh, basically in our given data, uh, the data points will be grouped into different clusters based on the similarities. Now, a midoid means, a midoid is also a data point in a given set of space where it can be defined as a point in the cluster. So you'll be having some hundreds of points in a cluster or depending on the size of the data set, you may have five or six points also in a cluster. So a moidoid is nothing but a data point in the cluster whose similarities or whose dissimilarities with all other points in the cluster is minimum. This is how uh, they, they have defined the meaning for a moidoid, okay? So uh, as you can see, to understand the concept of partitioning around midoids, we need to first understand what type of data we'll be working with, okay? So uh, basically partitioning around midoids concept is most effectively uh, useful for small data set, but for larger data set, uh, it will not be so effective to give some results, okay? So uh, this algorithm starts from an initial set of midoids and iteratively replaces one of the midoids by one of the non-midoids if it improves the total distance of the resulting clustering. So I will try to make you understand this with the example with the uh, next slides. So uh, as of this slide, we need to just have a clear understanding of what actually is a midoid when this algorithm was discovered and uh, where is it applicable for which type of data set it is most applicable. So as mentioned, it is most effectively useful for small data sets than large data set, okay? Uh, in partitioning clustering, we also have one more important algorithm as discussed called as clustering large applications. This was also uh, proposed by Kaufman in the year 1990, which is useful for larger data set as a PAM algorithm is useful for small data sets. So uh, there was one more algorithm which was helpful for large data set called as Clara or clustering large applications, sorry clustering large analysis, right? Yeah. So uh, talking about K-Midoids algorithm, uh, so we are having three simple steps here. So initially select K random points out of the N data points. For example, you are having some 500 data points. In these 500 data points, you need to select some K random points. These are called as the Midoid points. So associate uh, then step two, associate each data point to the closest midoid by using any common distance metric method, which means uh, similar to the k-means algorithm, we are computing the distance measure again here. And uh, the whichever the value which is close to the midoid, it will be grouped into one of the cluster. So there is one important terminology called as cost in k-midoids algorithm. So we need to calculate the cost and I'll be showing you the equation to calculate the cost and how the cost value will be used for uh, making clusters in the data point. So 
while the cost decreases. So during the algorithm, when, whenever the cost decreases for each midoid M, so a, a midoid is represented using M. So K stands for number of clusters or random points and N starts uh, N stands for number of data points in the given uh, set of data set and M stands for a midoid. So for each data point, which is not a midoid, swap M and O. So here you can having for uh, midoid M for each data O. O is nothing but an object or a data point. So swap M and O, associate each data point to the closest midoid and recompute the cost. So this algorithm iteratively, iteratively uh, moves on till every uh, total cost is computed and the total cost is more than that in the previous step, then undo the swap. So uh, here we are talking about swapping that is changing the midoid value from one point to other. So now let's have a clear understanding with a small uh, pictorial representation of what is K midoids algorithm. Okay, so don't get uh, confused with this algorithm. So once we get into the example and the data set uh, calculation, it will be clear for us. So at that time, we'll again come back here and understand the algorithm step by step again. Okay, so now uh, you can see here uh, you are having some data points in a uh, space where uh, you are having some uh, thrombus shaped. Uh, data points in a different different region, right? So now we are going to uh, see how k midoids clustering method or algorithm will be helpful to form some clusters, okay? Yeah, so now you can see uh, as the algorithm said, we need to select the randomly k midoids. So now, so here I am selecting three random uh, points which are considered as the midoid points, okay? Yeah, so I hope, uh, is it, is it clear till here to everyone. Yeah, so uh, here you can see as per the algorithm, the step one we have seen, uh, we are randomly selecting some K, uh, some randomly uh, values which are considered as the midoids. So here you can see uh, the purple color, the blue and the orange color are considered as the random K midoids, okay? So moving ahead, now you can see uh, because they are, so these objects I can see these objects are similar to these points. They are colored with these points. So uh, now this value, why this uh, orange color, the black color objects are, are uh, computed as the orange color because you can see the distance between each point to every midoid is calculated. For example, if I consider this uh, value from here to orange and from here to purple and from here to this blue, all these distances are calculated and you can easily understand this a black uh, uh, rhombus shaped object is nearer to the orange shape. That's the reason this is colored as orange in the next picture. You can see here all these uh, values are, uh, all these data points are converted from black to different colors by computing the similarity measure called as uh, Euclidean distance measure, okay? Yeah, so this is how you have now colored the objects. Now let's go ahead with the next step and you can see, yeah, as I discussed at Bessner distance calculation, they are formed into different, different clusters. So now you can see here, we have obtained three clusters. So the K value here is equal to three. So as in the step two of the algorithm, allocate to each point, which is the closest midoid. That's what we have done here. And next, uh, you can see, determine new midoid for every each cluster. So once uh, we have done a randomly selection and we have found some cluster, now as per the algorithm, you are now, now determining the new midoid value and now you're trying to check with the different representations, right? And now you can see, here you can see this particular object. So previously this is indicated with the orange color, right? Yeah, I can see it clearly. Uh, before the uh, before we were having uh, a midoid value here, so we we have considered this value as the uh, orange color. Now we have changing this random uh, new midoid value from this value to the next value. You can see now the midoid value is this one. And if I compute distance from this object to here and from this object to the blue color one, 
the value is now changed. You can see this value is belonging to this cluster now. So this is the very, very important observation which you need to have. So previously, you can see the number of colors uh, with orange is equal to seven, right? And number of uh, data points in cluster two, if it's a blue color is six. And for purple, you can see here it is something around seven. And now after the new middle value, you can see the value of orange is decreased by one and purple, there is no change and blue increased by one. So, okay. Uh, likewise, you can see these are the final clusters obtained by randomly changing the uh, midoid points. And you can see at this point, the clusters are finalized and this is where you are stopping your algorithm. So this is a pictorial understanding of what is K-midoids algorithm. Okay. So now uh, moving ahead with the uh, implementation of this particular concept. So previously we have understood how to represent clusters with different different randomly k, 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 random k values. Now let's look into the calculation of how do we compute the cost of each data point. So in k-means clustering, we have obtained the centroid values. So we have compared the values, uh, the distance calculation to the centroid value and whichever the value is less, we have kept it into that cluster. But coming to the k-midoids, here we are not having centroid values. We are randomly uh, choosing the midoid values. And now we need to compute the cost. That is the dis dissimilarity of the midoids and the objects. So the dissimilarity of the midoid, that is CI, uh, and object represented with PI is calculated by using the formulate is E is equal to mod PI minus CI. That is the dissimilarity between the object and the midoid. So the cost in K-midoids algorithm uh, is given as the formula, the equation you can see here. This is how we're going to calculate the cost of the K-midoids algorithm. Okay, yeah. So now let's look into the small example. Here you can see a small data set with two values X comma Y. So here X comma Y are some values which we don't know. They are called as uh, some random data points. Okay. Yeah. So this is a small uh, data set, which is uh, belonging to some unsupervised data. We are having X and Y values here. So this is a very small data set where uh, I'm going to take some nine or 10 random values. And I'm trying to understand my data set. So here we don't know what is X and what is Y. So I'm just having the values eight comma seven, that is X, X value is eight, Y value is seven as the first point. And next we are having three comma seven and four comma nine, so on. We are having some 10 rows here. So here you can see uh, the row number five and serial number five, you can see here eight comma five is indicated as red color. And also last one is indicated as red color. So randomly, we are selecting that these two are the random K midoid values. Okay. So I hope uh, everybody is clear with the data set, whatever we have taken here. Okay. Now, if I plot that data into a graph, the same data, if I plot them into a graph, here you can see two different clusters based on the points, uh, 8, 7, 3, 7, 4, 9, so on. I have just plotted them and you can see some points here. That is six points are uh, looking at, they are belonging to one cluster and four points belonging to other cluster. So we cannot say they are directly into clusters. Now the goal or the challenge for us using k midoids is we need to group them into clusters by calculating the cost of each value or the each metric. Okay. Now let's do that. Uh, you can see in step one, let, let the random selected two midoids. So because in the data set we have seen there are two midoid values. So K is equal to two and let C1 is equal to four comma five and C2 is equal to eight comma five. So I am saying that I am forming two clusters with the randomly chosen values that is eight comma five and four comma five. So we are saying that four comma five is cluster one and eight comma five is second cluster. These are called as the two midoid points. So in K means we call them as centroids and in K-midoids, we call them as the uh, 
two midoids here. So now uh, we need to calculate the dissimilarity from cluster one and dissimilarity from cluster two. It's again nothing but you are going to calculate the cost. So in k-means we have computed the distance value. Here we are going to calculate the dissimilarity of each non-midoid point with the midoids using the cost formula. The cost formula is already mentioned here. So using this cost formula, I am going to compute this table of values. Now you can see, yeah. So from uh, eight comma seven to the cluster one, the dissimilarity is six here, right? So using the formula that is uh, mod ci minus pi, these values are computed. So each point is assigned to the cluster of the midoid whose dissimilarity is led. For example, you can see dissimilarity of uh, eight comma seven from cluster one is equal to six six and dissimilarity from cluster two is equal to two. So we can directly say that the first point belong to cluster two because that is the less value. The points one comma two comma five go to cluster one and zero comma three comma six comma seven comma eight go to cluster two. Why? Because by calculating of the coin uh, cost, those values are having the lesser value. So the total cost is equal to yeah, three plus four plus four, so on. This is equal to twenty, right? That is because the summation. Uh, this is nothing but the summation values, right? Yeah. The cost of all the values is computed. Now going on with the step three, uh, randomly select any uh, one midoid point and recalculate the cost. So uh, we are randomly selecting one non midoid point, and again we are recalculating the point. So let us assume the randomly selected point because as shown in the previous uh, representation, once we have taken the random values, we need to check with the next random point. So the dissimilarities of each non-midoid point with the midoids C1 that is 4 comma 5 and C2 is equal to 8 comma 4. These are the randomly selected values now. Now let's see how uh, we are getting some points. So each point is assigned to the cluster whose dissimilarity is less. Likewise, again, the points what we got are 1 comma 2 comma 5 belong to cluster 1. And again, 0 comma 3 comma 6 comma 7 comma 8 goes to cluster 2. And the new cost is equal to 22, which again, difference is 2. So now uh, we are going to swap the cost that is 22, which is greater than 20. So as a swap cost is not less than 0, we undo the swap. So whenever the cost value is less than zero, then only we do the swap. Otherwise the swap is not okay. So with this, we can say as the swap is not less than zero, we undo the swap, hence three comma four and seven comma four. You can see here, yeah, three comma uh, four and seven comma four are considered as the final midoids. Okay, yeah. So uh, here you can see as per the, plot these six algorithms belong these three six points belong to cluster one and four points belong to cluster two this is how uh, we try to understand the k midoids values by calculating the cost of each and every value okay now talking about advantages and disadvantages so firstly let's talk about the advantages of k midoids algorithm it is simple to understand and very easy to implement because there is nothing again uh, we are not, not going to do any probability or any calculations. We are using just the cost formula and calculating the cost of every metric. So, yeah, so k midoids algorithm is fast and converges in a fixed number of steps. So the number of steps will be very less and it is less sensitive to outliers than k-means algorithm. That is the main advantage of partitioning around midoids algorithm, okay? And next, talking about disadvantages. So the main disadvantage of K-Midoids algorithm is that it is not suitable for clustering non-linear or non-spherical group of objects. Okay, yeah. So uh, it may obtain different results for different runs on the same data set because we are randomly selecting the Midoids from here to here. There may be uh, some ambiguity between the clustered points. Okay, yeah, that is the... Uh, the disadvantages of k-means clustering value. Okay, 
So I hope uh, everybody is clear till here about chemidoids algorithm. Okay.